Hi, I'm Aaron Swarovski. And I'm Austin Shaw. This is Between the Keyframes. Hi, Austin. What's up, Aaron? You know, all the things. We're here to talk about um, the rest of all the things, all the things we make. That's right. I mean, there's so many things we make that we had to break it into two episodes. I think it's really cool. And then you can even break down what we're talking about here. And I'm sure hopefully we get comments that you forgot about this and you forgot about that. I think like the real point of this episode um, or episodes topic is so that people really realize like the depth of our industry. It's no longer just making supers for commercials. This is like a fully immersive industry and there are a lot of options to be generalized as an artist or very specialized as an artist. That's right, that's right. Um, yeah, like you said, there's, we could probably, and, and maybe we will spend some episodes in the future digging in and actually like, yeah, really, really getting granular on, on particular niches and or genres of motion right. design. Okay, so where we left off, um, we had just talked about branding, which is super fun and so cool, but there's also brand videos. So there's like internal rah-rah videos that people play at conferences that don't even go outward facing to the wall, to the wall, to the world. Which wall? Um, <laughs> to that wall or that wall. You or know, that wall. <laughs> there's a lot of walls. All the walls. So many walls. Oh, it's a Sunday morning. Yeah. What are you, what are you going to do? I only have had a couple cup, cups of coffee. It's cool. I've had like two. I'm feeling pretty caffeinated. Yeah, I should be because I have as well. But anyway, so there's brand videos. You know, there's a there's a there's a brand video I I, I really like. Um, there's one you yeah. you all did for Caldrea. Oh, okay. Yeah, with the yeah, super really cool love that. illustrations and uh, really just nice integration of uh, live action and motion. Yeah, so that was um, for the brand Caldrea. They do uh, home scents and like candles, like you'd expect, but also like counter spray and all sorts of you know luxurious home goods and. You know, it was really fun to come up with this cool collage style uh, to really show off all the scent flavors and notes and um, and also like the fashiony look of the brand. So that was really fun. And then Territory did one that I love. It's for Ford, um, this Mustang video for, I think it was like the launch of the thing. Let me look again. Yeah, it's just really beautiful. It's like particles. You see these streaks running through cities and landscapes, and it turns obviously into the the Mustang itself. So it's like a cool car piece, but it's also got this cool course. It's like very CG and beautiful. Right on. Another, I think another type of brand video, looking at product and service launches at different conference mm -hmm. events. And there's a classic one, the design by yeah. Apple, you know, referenced all the time I have I have clients every time yeah. they're like there's a they're like we really like design. this this really minimal just just clean um elegant the, design yeah yeah the original one of those was the girl effect remember Ooh, the girl yeah. effect with the cool kinetic type that was a uh, Matt but Smithson did that yeah really yeah. cool yeah. piece but this at design by Apple is like the thing that whenever you're on a kinetic type call and they're saying, hey, here's some reference that is in there. Right. The question. minimal, minimal design plus type. So super cool. And that was a conference launch. That's that right. was a big rah-rah conference. Um, but obviously it takes on a life of its own once it's out in the world. So, you know, Tendril does a bunch of these. Uh, they have one case study that gets into uh, Windows 365. <laughs> And it's just super cool the work they do for for Microsoft. So. Right on. Yeah, I like that that whole the way that it takes your kind of flat screen experience and brings it into dimension and the depth in the layers. Um, just a yeah. cool way, cool way of um, uh, showcasing that, making that world come alive. That's yeah. interesting because we're talking about Apple and Microsoft. 
and such different approaches. It really, again, is a statement about who the brand is and where they're at and how they want to be seen in the world. That's right. So I think that that's a really cool way of looking at a brand video. Sometimes they make art films, though. Right. Sometimes they create a film that is all about, like, a, it's an extension, but there maybe isn't a bigger purpose other than, I don't know, I call them an art film because right. it seems more right. artful. Well, one of those I really like is Pez, right? Master of Stop Motion, um, Honda Paper, where um, it just shows the process of concept development and design development all mm -hmm. over this kind of epic continuous camera move um yeah gorgeous you yeah you also i mean that that piece was referenced for years as well yeah. and will still occasionally be called out but that was like that like shook things a bit which is fun and cool um then there's also ariel costa you talk about him a lot but like he has this piece for Marnie that I think is also a really cool brand art film. And Marnie is a fashion brand. So, you know, just a really cool look and aesthetic. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, here's a classic, uh, Buck's Metamorphos Metamorphosis for good books. That's another one of those I could probably, because I've, I've shown it to students in classes so many times and talked about it that I could probably spend a whole episode talking about this. But just yeah. a, a really, um, you know, Kind of, kind of a big statement in the industry. Set a lot of trends. Mm -hmm. I think kind of launched a lot of that like um, return to digi cell <laughs> into a lot and and just cool fluid transitions um, back yeah. into motion. Yeah. So, but brands also make other things. They make documentary films sometimes now. Uh, ter territory again. They did this really cool piece for Adidas. Um, that I think is really special. You see a lot of this with uh, athletic brands because it's people, content people are interested in, you know? Um, it's it's not just athletic wear and fashion, but there's also sport and superstars involved. And, you know, Falcon content is really big in that, like, Nike Jordan arena. So they have a thing called Real Talk that's got a really cool case study. It really gets pretty deep, but... Nice. You can see that there's also like motion design and like our design aesthetic like built into the way that those docufilms are created, you know. You know, another category, kind of a niche category is the explainer video that you know, studios have built their whole business around, right? And when I was uh, teaching at SCAD and we would bring studios in to do uh, portfolio reviews, I got to know a couple. There was one, uh, Demo Duck, and another one, mm -hmm. Epifio. And they just do these really robust and um, pretty comprehensive explainer videos. And, and it's across a range of styles. It can be flat graphics, it could be illustrative characters, it could be 3D, but there's literally just a kind of a never ending market for explainers. A hundred percent. Like we've done our fair share of explainer videos too. We just did an enormous campaign for um, a major car brand. And We've done in the past for Verizon, we did a big broadcast thing, but then they also had this package of explainer videos that they wanted at the same production value and through the same aesthetic. So we took that on as well. Like, how do you, you know, work with Alexa <laughs> or how do you kind of stream on your phone or something like that? So it is really, um, or just simply, how do you hook your cable modem? up to the tv i have i have no idea i get my wife to yeah, do that sure. i'm just like <laughs> well, uh, i'm you. like the remote the remote's not working <laughs> hello um now you can just talk to your remote which is also a video we did <laughs> how do you talk to your remote? but i mean it's just like a never-ending supply of that especially as things get more tech related um People need to know how to do it. And sometimes it's so simple that you just need a, a little video to be like, just push this button and start talking. <laughs> but it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I've fallen victim to that. But explainer videos are interesting too, because um, there are 
studios that specialize in that, but then the larger studios, all of them do their fair share of them. Even the ones that are more, um, you know, sexy 3D shops, they especially do 3D visualizations. Like Territory has this Barclays Beyond um, piece. You can see this, like all this like medical stuff, like cells splitting and things like that. Like all of these companies need visualizations like that. And, um, you know, who better than to make them than design CG companies. Right. It really makes the work look sexy, like a double helix or a cell splitting or, you know, all of that stuff could totally be handled by a motion design CG. Well, you talk, you talk about pharma, right? And, and mm -hmm. I've done recently a few projects. I mean, that seems like an, another one of these industries that constantly needs visualization whether it's explainers 3d whatever it is and and uh yeah. lots of work there what about apps apps and interactivity motion for um different types of affordances uh whether it's integrating it into interactive or just working along Right. So one one of the uh, companies I think does a lot of cool stuff here is Gunner. Mm. They did a really cool thing for the Google Home app. And it's just about kind of prototyping and visualizing a lot of how how these apps will work and and then often working with developers, right? And to actually mm. get this stuff to move um, via code, code driven animation. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't do a ton of this, so I don't know really a lot about it, but I know that you do. Um, well, I don't do a ton I, either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but I mean, like you, but, you teach, so there's yeah, all sorts of- Yeah, I know enough of, to talk about it a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, even just in us developing our website, there was this kind of component of it for like, well, let's show the developer how we want this to move for a transition or something like that. Cause all of that stuff said something about you and your brand. Does it ease in? Does it kind of bounce in? Like there's also another, uh, Stink Studios did this really cool. Um, like Stink piece. Studios. They do yeah, cool they do really cool work. It's called 2021 Cooldown and it's for Peloton. Um, and it's just like really cool. They designed all these icons and how they come on and go off and the type animation. And it's really a very beautiful system that they got going there. So nice. I think it's really neat. Yeah. What about, what about future? Oh, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, you were, I mean, they do oh. really cool work. Oh, should I, I like talk how about that one spot, the Ukes one? You can talk about ukes. Yeah, talk about ukes. Talk about ukes. <laughs> you can talk there about was, whatever you want. <laughs> there are these two two ukes. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no, there is one spot that I do like to show from uh, Stink Studios. They did for ukes this kind of couture. I guess they, they sell these like one off couture things, and they're all done in these YouTube yeah. pre rolls. It's a few years old, but I think it's a good example when I when I uh, introduce the topic of motion and design for social to students because one of the one of what this this project does is it's very engaging right like it's mm -hmm. visually and uh thematically narrative narratively engaging because it's all these this kind of rube goldberg stylized 3d where it's um all the products are being destroyed you only have a a, a limited amount of time to make make a bid or make a buy i mean which kind of you know, hits the, the fear strings a little bit, but yeah, I think FOMO. it's just a clever, yeah, it's a little FOMO, but it's just a very clever design driven system that works um, somewhat in this interactive space, you know? And, and it's like, and I think about that a lot with even some of the stuff I've been doing recently with the, uh, an agency that would do a lot of stuff for uh, Instagram stories, uh, feed, but a lot of it, it's it's like very simple interaction. It's like even if it's like clicking to advance the story, right? Mm -hmm. um, but things are connected, right? So like very simple <laughs> interactive affordances, but it's still there. You still got to think about it and kind of design and, and plan your motion around it. Well, what was interesting to me about when you were talking me through that project the other day was uh, 
how they use AI to change out their products. Um, I just think that's really fascinating. Okay, the next topic um, is future tech. Now, future tech is really a big industry. Technology of the future? (laughs) Figuring out what it's going to look like and all of that. And I think, you know, when I curated some examples, I went, you know, to territory and looked at like Ghost in the Shell because I thought I just remember seeing that and that being like really beautiful with the holograms. And but there are so many companies that like Perception and that that do that in a really beautiful way. Um, but if you look at Territory's studio reel, you'll see, and even perceptions, like you'll see that they also do this for brands. So brands are coming to companies that do this for film and television and saying, hey, do that for Ford and for Cadillac and help me figure out what my dash should look like in my next version of the car. Um, And so I think that's a really fascinating industry because you don't have to be a car designer. You just have to be a designer. And, you know, when you work on these films, you're certainly not designing spaceships (laughs) in the year, like God knows what. So um, it is, it is a really interesting assignment for, you know, a motion designer specifically working on, inter- you know, pre-visualization for interfaces yep. and things like UX, that. UX, right? It's starting a prototype oh, totally. for UX and um, I guess even sort of service design too. You can, it's all these totally. overlaps. Yeah. I'm going to talk about video games. <laughs> I'm probably not going to talk about video games because I don't really know much about it. Well, I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit. I like games. Yeah. I've been I've been kind of playing video games since I was a kid, and and um, and I've observed some more design driven games. There's a lot of them out there. I'll just a few that that really stuck in my mind. A game like Limbo, super cool, really uh, kind of noir graphic style. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of has that naive aesthetic. Um, but it's kind of a dark game, so there's like tension there. It's got nice parallax and depth of field. Cool. Just a gorgeous game, puzzle platformer. Um, another one I really like is Gris. That is just more like illustration, like moving illustration, watercolor, really nice um, frame by frame, digi cell. Um, kind of sprite animations. I mean, there's so many. Another one I spent like a summer playing was Red Dead Redemption 2, which is just gorgeous, right? (laughs) Like the the environment, I mean, I would just sit there, I'd be playing, but then I'd also just stop and I'd just move the camera around and look at the scenery. And it was just unbelievably epic in the detail and it's, kind of mind blowing, right? And I've seen, I've been at like conferences where people, you know, academics and scholars are doing things like hacking the cameras of some of these games and like taking photography in these worlds or, I mean, it, it's Crazy. it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. I love that. Well, I remember, you know, more just cause I'm pretty focused on the brand side of things like a company called north kingdom they've done some like some definitely just video game video games but they also do stuff for brands and i remember there was this one cool thing they did for like mcdonald's and happy meal i think it's called slope stars where you kind of turn the happy meal box into like a video display and it's really kind of neat like so there is crossover into brand territory there okay so what else about video games you talked about two dots to me once oh yeah two dots so like there's a lot of really cool games um there's things i play on the phone two dots is a great one like it's just a puzzle but it's it's design driven right it's really pretty um so it's engaging in that way i mean there's a lot there's a lot of um yeah ios or just android type games Mm -hmm. for sure very cool. Okay, so now we move into experiential. And experiential is like video games, but like in the real world. So like in the real how world. Do, how do we move through a space? How does that space affect us? Like what as motion designers are we doing to that space? You know, historically our work has been on screen, so you have like 
the piece that Brand New School did for Make Google Do It, where they did, you know, some billboards, Times Square style. We talked a bit about the Moment Factory. They make a lot of cool shit. They do some <laughs> cool stuff, yeah. And I'd say yeah. they do, they they hit them. Like, you have the more, uh, like, digital billboards, the 9x16 mm-hmm. sizes, like, in store, in a subway, in a bus shelter. Mm. That's a pretty standard type of uh, experiential uh, deliverable yeah. or space. But Moment Factory, I'd say, hits the more experimental or just mm-hmm. the non-traditional, like, we need you to projection map on a cathedral. Or we need, like, like the yeah. really epic, um, hasn't been done before, or just, yeah. like, really out there. Yeah. Totally, but like from a brand perspective, they've done um, like the National Art Centers, and there's like a whole like the fa- facade of the building. It like works with the architecture in a really beautiful way. But they've done stuff from Microsoft, their flagship store. They've done stuff for Sony. <laughs> like so, these are like experiences in store that are just like next next level. So next that's level. really cool. What about live performance? Live right. performance, yeah. Half, so halftime shows, halftime shows, graphics for those. You also have just like you're going to see your favorite band, and you know there's stuff there. Like Moment Factory did um, some stuff for Halsey that was really cool. I really love the Studio Morose. They do a lot of stuff for like the MTV Music Awards, um, which is also that gets into whole a whole brand for the the thing, but they. But they also do these, like, really cool, like, just experiential things for really rad bands that I've never heard of. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> just very European, too. So I don't, which means that it, like, doesn't have to mean anything. <laughs> They're not hitting you over the head with, like, a yeah. logo and they're afraid you're not going to understand it, right? Yeah. Well, musicality. Uh, it's yeah. just supposed to reflect whatever the vision of that artist is. You know what? Like experiential and AR, like mm-hmm. AR, augmented reality. Uh, Buck did a super cool thing, industry city mural. Um, I mean, yeah. and, and then of course, there's also just all kinds of affordances, whether it's just on the phone, right? Like so many things we can do where you're just like face filters, right? Um, totally. You know, we bug out with the snap camera sometimes and just yeah. turn ourselves into uh, bananas or, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Well, then there's also interactive installations like you were talking about with Brand New School back in the day, walking and things following you. Um, But you love to talk about drone shows. Oh, that's right. Right. That's another one of my alums, uh, Eddie, Eddie Nieto at um, Hobbs. Right. And and I believe Mm -hmm. he worked on these these drone shows. and, And I've seen lots of different case studies of them. But where you basically are programming drones to create motion graphics uh, in the sky, right? At like a massive scale. So what do you do? You create it all in like cinema or whatever? I'd imagine, yeah, something that you're prototyping it in. And then I guess you got to program the drones. I guess you send the camera information to the drone and each drone knows its path and, you know, they can change colors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Back to being 3D meshes. We are 3D meshes. I mean, it's fascinating. It's all fascinating. Um, You talked about projecting mapping with the cathedral. Um, I think, you know, Moment Factory does a good job with that, too. But, you know, our friends at Meptic also do a bunch of that stuff. That's right. That's Um, right. It's a fun project that G Monk yeah. did. Uh, I yeah, think it was in China, Peter. and yeah, yeah, Peter Peter Clark worked on it with them. The ISO project, um, all kinds of cool examples for projection. Um, my buddy John, uh, my co-author John Collette, yeah. he just did a, a projection mapping project in the museum in Savannah, the Jepson That's Center. Really so, cool. yeah, yeah. That's really cool. It's just an opportunity to like get your work out in the world in a very different way. That's not necessarily in a screen in front of your face, you know, that like puts you in an environment and that environment then has a transformative quality. It's really kind of a special 
<laughs> thing, you know, it's just well, different. Also, I mean, part of it too, a lot, I mean, a lot with everything we we're just talking about too is is the affordance of the technology, like the, mm-hmm. the prices of projectors coming way down and more powerful projectors for less. Um, so that's made it more accessible. Yeah. We could be talking about Unreal in any one of these categories. Like, I feel like motion designers have to know that that's coming. And just like we were just saying, like, the the price of the technology, like, you have video walls, like LED walls that are becoming much more accessible and they're being built. Um, so what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot more filming where the post is done in advance. And that's going to be very hmm. much done well, like XR unreal. type stuff? Well, it's... What's XR? Explain Extended that reality. So like what they're doing with like, I know the, um, what was the show? The Mandalorian, the Star Wars Yes, show. exactly like right, that. where they have the stage. I didn't basically. know that was called XR. But like where people would normally be on green, they're now in the environment. And like the only area that's a little funky now is with feet and building the landscape and, you know, getting that to mesh. Right. But um, and if they need to, what the, all they'll do is they'll just pop green on the screen behind them. If it's like, okay, we need a shot or a moment in the green so we can comp it later. Like easy. Right. It's really it's just like an absolutely <laughs> incredible technology to be able to do all that or to say like you're on set and you're filming and you're like, actually, if the sky was a little gloomier, that would be great. And then do, 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 the sky is gloomier. Right. Come on. And that's know. all game engine stuff. Is that all unreal? It's unreal. And, and others. Unity. And yeah. Unity. Okay. But like. I mean, I say Unreal because I think Unreal's the future, but I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that has to get worked out too, especially for the commercial world to uh, adopt it because things on the commercial world, we're not world builders because we are shop makers. (laughs) And so when you're making the shot, you're not worried about all this other shit. But like when you're making a film, you're world building. You're like, okay, let me build this out. Let me build that out. So you can point your camera in any direction and you're in the world. And same thing with video games and things like that. So Right. And because the game engines different. Are, are made for efficiency too. I mean, I remember yeah. a bunch of years back um, listening to a guest speaker who was talking about, he was like a texture artist. Right? Yeah. So he was working on games. And I guess at that time, the games, I mean, they probably still do. They have polygon counts, right? There's only so many polygons you can put in if it's going to work right. So, like, he would paint. He would do almost like matte painting for textures. It was really yeah. cool to see. And, really and cool. So, basically, yeah. like, they're UV unwrapping. They're painting all the little scratches and the, and the yeah. specular lighting in, in the texture so that it could – look gorgeous in a polygon limited environment but i think i feel like my understanding now is with like some of this unreal like they're just able to get like insane level of quality um yeah, and still getting, be efficient yeah it's really getting there so we're back to talk about uh, one of the newest frontiers for motion designers. Um, I'm so glad that a motion, like like the king of NFTs is a motion designer. I <laughs> That makes me so happy, especially in like, because I studied studio art when I was an undergrad. Then I studied graphic design in grad school. And there's always been like, you know, there's this history. Well, I was just going to say always, but, you know. Yeah. Decades and century, uh, what, a century or two maybe now of, uh, you know, fine art versus design, fine art. right? Fine art yeah. versus commercial art, right? And the fact that, like, you know, a motion designer basically just exploded the the fine art world <laughs> makes me well, a, I mean, a little happy. <laughs> I So he's, he uses motion design as his tool, as his, um, you know, like the way a painter uses paint or an illustrator uses or right, right, and what I'm what I'm referencing is more of like yeah. this sort of derision that I think the yeah. fine art world has had for commercial art, right? That's commercial totally. artists aren't fine art, blah, 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 and it's like yeah, that like now? because you're using a Wacom tablet <laughs> and a and software that somehow the work is not necessarily art right. has been um, debunked. But I think the thing that you're noticing is that the more successful people. Uh, are they have something to say with their work. Yep. 
Absolutely. And Point of view, only, as you yeah, like to say. Yeah. And not yeah. only is there expertise, but there's also a vision and they're saying something. So now there's a place for those people to sell that work. So, so like my only real contribution to the NFT conversation is, is like, if you think you're going to go out and make a bunch of money making NFTs, even if you're an incredibly talented motion designer, you have to think of it like art. Like, what are you saying with it? Like, and how big is your following? How do people know you? Like the, the traditional, yeah, like in your traditional art world, like you have galleries and you have this and you have like hype people. Like in the NFT world, it's it's different what all of those things are, but you still need a following. If you have Absolutely. 30 followers on Instagram, you're probably not going to be selling NFTs for a lot of money. Right. You know? Well, that was one of the things that uh, when we were at the Camp MoGraph, right? And mm -hmm. Be uh, Beeple was the keynote, and he was talking about, I, th I thought was really interesting, is he said, whether you're doing motion design or you're selling NFTs or making NFTs, he's like, it's a ton of work, one way or the other, right? As for the NFT, he said, you know, the marketing, like he'd spent yeah. years building up the following yeah. you know, before any of that happened. So it's one way or the other. It's not just like, OK, cool, I'm just going to put that stuff out there. Right. Like it's it's a mm -hmm. lot of work. It's a lot of yeah. promotion, whether it's self-promotion or if you've linked up with um, I don't even know what it like. You know, I know there's the different spaces, um, super rare, whatever, like all the different spots. Um, yeah, it's still a lot of work. But but a few people, a few of our our uh, relations and friends who've done done some things. Um, you know, Sakani, who we talked to, yeah. uh, you know, he's done pretty well, <laughs> you know, he, he mm -hmm. sold a few NFTs for not insignificant, um, you know, amounts of, of, of crypto, which is real money, it's money if you it's take money. it out. Yeah. Right. Another one, you know, a contact of mine, Lucas, Lucas yeah. Anoto, he's done real well, right? Like he's done great. And, and it's interesting because he was sort of on that trajectory of building a really big following before you know the gates broke open but mm. um he's done lots of cool stuff with his like loopable moods and those really just mm -hmm. like uh um, very approachable very connectable types of animations yeah. so fun yeah g monk g monk's done really well i'm sure yeah 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 you know and peter right internal at internal peter clark right um he's done he's done uh, pretty good too so yeah 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 Okay, so that's NFT talk. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know like that we really, <laughs> that's enough NFT talk. Well, I think it's great that, um, you know, now a motion designer that's an artist can be putting their work out there and there's gallery space where they can make some money. Okay. All right, well, that's all the things we make. All those things that got me tired. Yeah, and so um, if, you, if you think of more things, please let us know. Yeah, let us know what we forgot. Yeah, um, and if but you have it, examples, but do it nicely. Yeah, do it nice. <laughs> and if you have examples of something that's like just absolutely killer that we didn't say, throw it in there. Especially Unreal, I want to see more um, real time engine stuff. I want to see how that's kind of affecting our motion design world out there. Cool. Cool. All right. Thanks, Austin. I'll see you Thanks, later. Aaron. Peace out. Peace.